Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. So I won't ask you to uh, comment in the sec. Uh, I won't ask you to leave a comment in the comment section again because there were way too many for us to answer. So instead, we're going to do it this way. Here's the question: Do you want these videos, these daily videos, to be content-based, meaning we're going to do this particular process and we'll film it until we're done, or would you rather it be a timed-based video? So up in this corner, just click on that. Take the survey, tell us what you want. There's one of two choices, poll, and uh, we'll abide by that, and that's how we'll do it going forward. So today, we, uh, are, we last time we did the inside of the drawer sides, we did the bottom edge. Before we do the ends, we're going to fit these to the opening. So we've got to go over here to the table, so I'm going to move that over <coughs> so I'm not having to run back and forth, or should I say forth and back. You got to get there before you can come back. I had an uncle who fought in World War II. And uh, he had several beefs. And one of them was people saying back and forth. Yeah, can't get there. You can't come back until you've been there, for what that's worth. All right, so uh, we will do the right side first. And I'm just going to get. Actually, the best thing to do is actually measure it, and then we'll just dial in and get closer and closer until we hit it. So that is strong three. I got glue right on the three, so I can't see it very well. I'm going to start at three and a sixteenth. And just because I'm nervous about wrecking it, Now, I don't want it to be um, too small because I've got to be able to get rid of the saw marks. So I'm going to open that up just a, just a bit. I'm going to, uh, I hate to lay it on that nice plain surface, but I want that edge to be square to this, not necessarily to that. Although, you know what, we ran those through the thickness planer, didn't we? So it should be. In that case, I'll run it on the uh, outside. Okay, don't want to go. I don't want to use the saw to get any closer. Now, if this one, that one is close enough to be in the same, that I'll I'll use the same setting for it. Make sure I cut the right part off. So uh, I have a request, if you don't mind. If any of you uh, know about our Purple Heart Project, you know the name retired Colonel Luther Sheely. And Luther is the, uh, Luther is what keeps this thing together and makes it work. And this coronavirus has touched home because his 52 year old sister who lives in South Carolina was tested positive on Tuesday. By Wednesday, she was in the hospital on a uh, uh, ventilator, and they were surprised this morning. Actually, this we're, film we're filming this Thursday night, so you're seeing it Friday. So Thursday morning, they were, the doctors were surprised she made it through the night. Now, the last update I got was that she uh, 
She is still on the ventilator. They've got her on a couple of different medications and uh, they're just hoping for the best. So if you wouldn't mind remembering her, her name is Alice. In your prayers, we would certainly appreciate it. This is a serious thing. Okay, now I'm gonna bring that a little closer. Okay, um, before I do that, I want to check and make sure that that's... Uh, in case you didn't notice, I cleaned out my tool tray. So now I don't have any scrap pieces of wood to test things on. When I'm doing something like this, I want to make sure that my blade's not out farther than I thought. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I have to. Were there any questions you remember reading off the... I know there were some, I just unfortunately can't remember. Had a busy day. Now, I can't see, I mean I can't see the grain, so I'm running my fingers and believe it or not, you can usually tell which way the grain is running by doing that, and I'm pretty sure that it wants to go this way. I need some extra light. What? It didn't sound like it. Well, let's give it a go this way. Yeah, it was. Okay, so ignore what I just told you. Now, nah, actually, it's true most of the time. Still a bit tight. Now, I do, this, because it came off the table saw, these two edges are parallel. So, the way to maintain that is to make sure you're pulling a shaving over the entire length. Sometimes, especially when you're, okay, right on. Especially when you're brand new at this, uh, you have a little bit of a struggle at the beginning and you usually skip and then your plane starts cutting here. Well, now it's no longer going to be parallel. You've introduced a taper to it, so you just have to be aware of that. Now I swear it wants to go this way. I keep my index finger on the top to keep pressure on it to keep that drawer front sitting flat. There's a piece of masking tape up in there. Now I'm going to back that off a little bit so it's not quite so. I'm running my thumb on there to make sure I don't have any saw marks left. Okay, a little snug. little concerned that that's seems to be getting narrower towards the back but I'm staying with parallel S 
son of a gun. Now, I have to bring it up that this requires patience. So this may not be the type of video you want to watch because there is no hurrying. Oh, by the way, fix this one. And you always tell if your drawer is working properly, you should be able to close it by pushing in on the bottom, bottom corner. So we spent half hour on filming on our online workshop today. And that's one of the things that we did was go in and fix this. And believe it, it was actually along this top edge. So hard trying to find that last spot where it's offering a bit of resistance. Now, I'm starting to get a little nervous about taking off any more than that. I'm going to turn it around just to make sure that I haven't introduced a taper. No. It sticks at about the same point, so that's good news. I just wonder. When we built this, we did it a little bit different than we would have had ever done anything like this before. And I almost wish I could go in there and just plane a little bit of that edge, but I have no I have nothing that I can do that with. Can you check to see if there's a bump? Could use that shoulder plane. Well, I remember when we built this thing, we were extremely cautious. But there's definitely a... Why don't you check to see if there's a bump? Shut down for just a second. got to think about this. We think we have found a bump in here. And I gotta get the longer, where's that straight edge? Is this the one Jake gave me? Or Abby? So I don't know if you can see, but when I put this up tight in the front, it's not make it's way out in the back, not making contact. So I have no idea why this has developed a belly in there, but I got to get rid of it. Now I got to figure out how to do it. So I can only use a shoulder plane. It's not going to be easy, but doable. The good news is I don't have to go all the way to the back. I just got to get rid of that hump. Um, really going to be best if we turn this upside down. Upside down or sideways? I think sideways. So if we were to park this up on the bench on its edge, on its end, we'd be able to reach in there. How do you shut this off, Jake? So I gotta take it apart, which actually is easier than it sounds, and lift it up on the bench and then go in there and figure that out. So I will, uh, I, we got to clear some stuff out of the way and then we'll turn the camera back on. Okay, Jake, you look over my shoulder. So here's the problem. Do you see how that teeters? It's out a fair bit. So it's right about in the middle. I don't know whether that happened when we put the top on. I suspect it did. Anyway, we got to fix it. So, um... Problem is I can hardly get my arm in there. And that that uh, five eighths is not quite not quite um, wide enough. And that one won't go in. So it's gonna have to work. But that's alright because it'll cut a swath that is wide enough for that. Well, then that's all we have to do. Chisel, I don't, don't even don't have to, but let's go through. I'll walk you through the sharpening of this. This is a Lee Nielsen um, shoulder plane. Now, when you sharpen these, you have to stay square because you have very little. That little bit of movement, uh, just lateral adjustments that you have back here would account for maybe a degree. So you have to... 
you have to be careful. Did I already tell them about the stones? I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. So I'll set that down. Find the primary. That's the 45 degree bevel. 25, sorry. Raise up just slightly. Now, if you do circles with these, you run the risk of throwing it out. It's easier if you just do little short forward and back strokes. I'm using my middle finger on my left hand to apply pressure right in the middle. And I'm just moving it forward and back. At the same time, I'm going side to side so as not to wear one spot. And I'm now getting a full width shadow on there. So feeling for a burr. Not quite happy with it yet. Try that again. Okay, now come over here to the 16,000, do the same thing, only come up a little bit higher. You're creating what we call a tertiary bevel. And that allows you to make that big jump from 1,000, or from 500 actually, to 16,000. And then the final step is to apply the uh, Charlesworth ruler trick. Steel rule on the side, blade on its back, and then just stay within a quarter of an inch of the opposite edge. And create that little, well actually I already created the back bevel, this is just a matter of polishing it. Or in this case, taking off the burr. Now I've got to set that plane up on a scrap piece of wood. I don't want to experiment inside that cabinet. I can just feel how many times I'm going to bust my knuckles in there. <laughs> now there's a little slot in the back of the blade that fits in that adjuster knob. Put the uh, lever cap in. Now I'm going to work on flush on this side so thing to do is to lay that down on something firm, push down like that. The blade's always a little bit wider than the body so that you can do that to make it flush to that side. Now I've got to get it, it slides when you move it because there's nothing holding the blade from going one side or the other. I'll move these out of the way. Put that piece of pine back in. I want to make sure the blade is projecting parallel to the sole. I'm going to close that throat down too. So loosen that knob. That's too wide. And then just go in here and turn that. And that closes that gap down which if you deal with any figured wood, it'll prevent tear out, but it's got to be really tight in order for that to function. I'm not too worried about tear out in there. I'm more worried about just being able to pull the wood off. Now let's try that. Problem is that that's uh, wider than the blade, so I gotta clean it up each time to recheck it. I'm going to retract it just a slight bit, tighten that up a little bit more, make sure it's flush on that side. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of wax on the side and on the bottom. Now the problem is right in the middle. So we'll go in there. I, I, I really don't have much in the way of um, grip. Now what do we get off of that? Yeah, 
You know what? That didn't uh, that didn't work the way I want. Let's try this again. It is a little heavier on the on the left side. Shoot, Jake! Do you know where my little brass hammer is? Anyway, it's gonna it'll I'm gonna move it out a little bit. I want a little heavier cut, and that's gonna cause it to swivel this way, which should push that right side out and that's exactly what it did okay I'm trying not to uh, I'm trying not to bang these corners at all I want them left nice and sharp so when the drawer is closed you don't even see it Okay, we got we got a uh, full width shaving. Actually, what we're, the best way to test this, since we've already planed down this edge, is to test this. It's still too tight. Not the way we normally do it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go in, I want to start right here. I want to take the top of the hill off first. So a relatively short pass, then come back and go a little farther forward. Now that's too aggressive. The other uh, difficulty is that this is a light plane, so it doesn't have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, momentum, or you can't get much momentum out of it. And all these edges in here are sharp, so you slip. Try again. Should we quit? Mm -mm. You know, there's a yeah. There's a bump there, and there's a bump there. So we'll pull that blade in a little bit. Push it over this way first, and then push it back so we know we're actually moving it. Okay. Jake, you know what? If we could secure this somehow, so I could push a little harder. I put two hands in there. I think I can do it better. Okay, I got a block in there so that we can.
Oh, that's why it's catching. It flips up and catches that lip where I didn't do it. Got to remember that when we're fitting it. Okay, I'm not going to mess with around with this anymore because I think that's done the job. Okay. Sometimes this crap happens, but you got to be able to fix it. Now, the only thing I'm I'm disappointed in is that I didn't discover that sooner. And I've taken that side down a little more than I wanted to, but I can't do much about it, so I'll just have to I'll have to have a gap the same amount on both sides. Good news is you stand up here and look down on it, you won't notice it nearly as much. Okay, that it for today? All right, we'll put this back together tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to broadcast two. One of them is going to be an advertisement for our online workshop with a deal for you, a freebie for a month, and uh, and then what I hope to get done tomorrow is we'll get the ends, we'll square the ends up and get them to the right length. We'll go in and we'll plane up the inside faces of the front and the back. And we should be able to actually start laying out the dovetail tomorrow. All right, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow.